Hey, and welcome to the Ladies in Biz podcast, where every week we have guests that are amazing female entrepreneurs. Find out how they got started and grew their business. Discover how their story can help you grow your business. Thanks for tuning in today. Here is your host, Penny Redmond. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Ladies in Biz. And I'm so happy that you joined us today. We have a guest that is very interesting and has a lot of information to talk to about. And uh, especially for our entrepreneurs out there, she's going to give you all kinds of tips. So today we have Jennifer Trask, who is a mindset coach for entrepreneurs. Hello. How are Hello, you, Jennifer? Penny. I'm great. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thanks so much for coming on. It's really a appreciate it. So Jennifer, I, normally I read off a bio and now I've kind of changed it a little bit. So I'm wondering if you would just be able to give us a little bit about your bio and maybe a little bit of your story on, because I know you've got an interesting story. Yeah, for sure. Well, my I, I actually grew up in an entrepreneurial household. So entrepreneurship was um, introduced to me at a young age. And, um, I have a couple business degrees and I, I got into entrepreneurship because when I was doing my first corporate job, right. Um, I remember about nine months in six months in, I got bored nine months in, I realized I do not like having a boss. And, <laughs> and then 14 months later when the contract was up, I, there was no renewal and I ended up going actually back to MBA school. Um, so I could figure myself out cause I, I didn't know what I wanted to do, you know, but, um, when I was in MBA school, something magical happened. I had a mentor who to this day I'm friends with, and she suggested I go to this live event and it was, I'd never been to a self-help or like motivational event of any sort at this point in time, but I went and it was a full day. There's about 5,000 people in the stadium. And I really enjoyed it. The speakers were good. And then the keynote speaker came out. This was about the seventh speaker of the day. And when he came out, the whole place went up like a rock concert. <laughs> and I remember in those first few moments, it really felt like time stood still for me. And I remember feeling like everything went quiet. And I was just like, that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. And what I was really taken with was, first of all, this person's ability to get this many people excited about living their best life. I mean, he, that, he was talking about peak performance and all this stuff, right? And uh, I thought that was amazing. And I, I lo I've always loved speaking. Um, and I've always been a motivator and I've, I've been a coach even since because I was highly involved in sports and I was an aerobics instructor. And so um, I didn't know that all that was preparing me for the, the path of my future. But mm -hmm. so that, that I realized in that moment, I wanted to be in that field somehow. At this point in time, I didn't really know what coaching was or I wasn't really in the sphere, but but bought all the CDs and DVDs and all those <laughs> things, as you do. And I remember I was, I was a student, so I was like, well, I guess this will go on my student loan. <laughs> right? And um, and so that, when I graduated, that was, I, I think about four to six months later or so, I graduated. And um, I became an entrepreneur. And an opportunity opened up, and I became an entrepreneur. Uh, an entrepreneur. And what's really interesting is that business, that first business failed, but it was the um, opportunity for me to get heavily involved in self-development as well as I learned a lot about internet marketing in those days. And this was back in, you know, 2009 and 2010 when Facebook was just really getting going for business. Yeah. It, it yeah. wasn't, not everyone was really doing it at that point in time. Um, and so I started teaching social media to people and that helped me get clients. And, um, then I went into marketing consulting because of my background in education. Um, I knew social media was just like a piece of someone's marketing overall marketing plan. 
Um, and then as I had mentioned to you on our, our previous conversation, things really changed about four years in when I niched into coaching coaches. And the reason things changed for me is twofold. And one is when you, when you find a niche that you really shine in, you can, you can really shine and your message is very clear and precise. And that was very um, good for me. But the other reason is because it brought together my two loves, which was I really love business and strategy, but I really love coaching and self-development and I loved working with the helpers, like help, helping the helpers, right? Yeah. Um, and yeah, and so over the years, that's, that was about seven years ago now. So over the years, um, I really learned that to build a business, you actually have to build yourself. And so now, uh, because your business will evolve over time, and mine has absolutely evolved, and now my primary focus is mindset. Um, I still do do some strategy with people, but really helping someone become who they need to be to get the results they want is where uh, my magic lies and, and where um, I, I'm at, at the most value. So for, as a mindset coach, what kind of uh, clients are you seeing uh, come through then for you? Like, or what is that ideal client? Well, there's a, a few different people and, and it can be, I think anyone any entrepreneur at any stage can use a mindset coach. Um, you should always really have one. Even coaches need coaches um, because it's a forest from the trees concept, right? So when you're in something, you can't see it objectively because usually one, you're in it. So you can't see it from the outside perspective. And two, you're usually emotionally in it. So that attachment emotionally is going to block your ability to see a perspective that's necessary to have a breakthrough or to make the positive change you need to make. Um, so, you know, I'll work with clients. I mean, I have clients who are new to business and they sort of want to, they want to get everything on board to help them become as successful as possible quickly. Um, and I also work with seasoned entrepreneurs who they built their business mainly through hustle and now they're tired and they can't keep, going at the same rate. I call them, they're the doers. And my role is to help them become beer. So how do you learn to access states of flow to get things done quicker? How do you use uh, manifestation and alignment in order to call things into you faster? And also looking at what is going on in your business? What do we streamline? What do we get rid of? You know, that's more of a strategic thing. So it's sort of a combination of a few different things that helps people um, one, enjoy the process of building their business more, and then two, allowing the, uh, the beliefs and stories that they have about themselves that are not supporting them to go by the wayside and move into the identity of who they know they really can be. So I think it's really important just to raise this to people or listeners that when a mindset coach is, is it can be used all the time. And not just because maybe your business is even doing well. You should always have someone else out there listening uh, to your business, knows your business, and can be there to give you an, a, an opinion with someone that isn't as close. I really believe that as entrepreneurs, we get so close to our business, and we are so passionate because that's how we got into it, right? Yeah, yeah. But in the same token, all that's so lovely, and that's why we're successful but you really do get blinded a lot of times. And sometimes it's just, it's just tough to not have someone else's opinion that you value and you know can get, just set you on the right path. Yeah, and I find that for, especially for creatives, um, like even for me, even when I'm working in like sales copy and things like that for me, you know, I'm so in it. So I'm like, I ask people for outside opinions. What, does this make sense? Does this resonate? Because you know, I don't know. I, I find like I'm in it so much. It just gets muddled. But whereas, so I need people to do for me what I do for other people. Like we, I just had a call before you. Um, I had a VIP call with a client and we were going through her launch sequence and her messaging. And, you know, through me asking her the right questions, we pulled out what's actually going to sell for her, not 
you know, cause she was looking more at the tactical processes of what she does. And I'm like, that's so nobody cares about that stuff. Right. This is what they care about. And here's, and so because I'm an outsider and I'm just like, I'm trying to understand it from that basic point of view. And she's explained things. And when I repeat it back, she's like, yes, that's it. And I said, yeah, cause you need that separation. And then you need someone who knows how to ask the right questions. Yeah, you really do get in your head a lot as an entrepreneur because you're you're literally sleeping, breathing, eating everything with your company. And sometimes it's good with having, I think with a coach as well, is that you have an opportunity to sit down with someone that has that knowledge, understands your business. And you know what? So then you can be more productive later on because you already know what the strategy and what the plan is. Because you're not still mulling it over in your brain and wasting and spinning your wheels. Now, one of the things that uh, when I know we talked to uh, listeners, just to let you know that both Jennifer and I were t- uh, met one day at a BNI event. Yes. And, uh, I said, oh my goodness. I said, this is so cool because one of the things I loved about Jennifer is that she not only has a really thriving business with the coaching on one and one but she also has and created this wonderful, the joyous journey is what it's called. And it's a membership. So I think that's so wonderful because we were talking about why you created this membership. And I think it's so important. So can you share that with us again, why you created this membership? Yeah. You know, the membership really solved a couple of problems and Problem one was I was, I was, I had run, I've run multiple online courses, you know, like three month courses. Um, and they were all mindset driven. Um, one was called manifesting your awesomeness. Another one was change your story, change results. Um, I was still trying to find that magical, the wording, right? Um, but nonetheless, what would happen is by the end of the three months together, people were really starting to get results and they were into it and they were posting a lot. They were engaged and they were excited. And then it was over. And I realized like, that's not helpful (laughs) because, because when you're looking at transformation of a human being, as well as transformation of a growing business, it doesn't take three months. You need ongoing support. And the membership was a way that I could help people get the core content down and then um, learn to master it as well as be in an immersive environment and have a community to go to that it's always there um, and you know it doesn't end yeah the other thing that I find too is that everyone uh, goes at their own pace yes and some people will be very quick and some people need to be more methodical and it's gonna take them a lot longer time to feel comfortable. So in the whole scheme of if you were someone building a business, three months is nothing. It is like that. And really it is not enough time to do anything. So how does it, I don't wanna sound like it's a commercial, but I want it, the reason that I'm raising this about a membership is because I think that all coaches should offer something like this. Yeah. Because um, you don't want to have your um, client that's just starting, just like you say, Excel, and then all of a sudden you drop them. It's like, well, that's not fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it also, memberships create more affordable options for those who can't do, you know, maybe private coaching or, you know, even, I mean, even especially for newer entrepreneurs. Um, sometimes even investing in a, in a course, like a one or $2,000 course is not always an option for them. And so with a lower price point, it's a really great way to, um, help get them in to get the help that they need. And then, you know, as their business grows and they have more resources, then they can move on to other things. Well, I can remember when I first got started, especially in digital, it, it was, um, just, it was digital courses and just figuring out the funnels and everything like that. And when uh, purchase a course and then you look through it and you go, but I have so many more questions. Yes. And also, um, I know this seems ridiculous, but I can tell you from when I first got started and where we are now in building funnels, it's totally different. Yeah. So you really have to keep up to date on it. So something that you bought even a year and a half ago, actually, quite frankly, is probably outdated unless they've updated it again and again and again. Yeah. You know, because all the software programs, there's so many new ones, 
and that are you know good competitors to the older uh, software yeah. that you know you have to be able to figure it out for yourself but if you have someone like yourself that's there and you've got a membership it's constant renewal so yeah and one of the great things about well particularly about the joyous journey and mindset work is it's foundational work so and it's it's um it's the kind of work where it's it's there and no matter what you're navigating as your business and you change um it still comes down to the core same principles which is similar in marketing so even if the the social sites change even if the marketing funnels change like the basis basics of marketing never change like the, yeah. the basics of understanding uh you know the benefits versus the the tactics and the the positioning statements and understanding your ideal client, like all those things, they are forevermore will always be important and they never change no matter what Absolutely. you're utilizing. Yeah. Um, Build their business. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the thing is that, you know, learning about those things is just the beginning. Like if you want to be a great, great entrepreneur, you need to master these skills and you need to master your mindset. You need to master communication and marketing. Like these are, and the, and mastery takes years. Yeah. It can't be taught in three months or anything like that. No. And the other thing that I love too about it is when you're doing something like that is because your businesses do evolve and all, all too often I've watched people where they've decided that they were going to start their business and literally within six months it's different because they've sat down with a coach and they've gone over exactly on what they think it should be. Right. And then find out that maybe it's not what they think it should be. So then you've got to alter it. And I just saw, it was so interesting the other day, I saw someone, a podcaster that has been around for a long time, very well recognized. And uh, his name is Rick Mulready. I love him. Oh yes. Yeah. Facebook ads and that. And I just, think he's just a great guy. Just love him. I DM him all the time. <laughs> he has no idea who I am, but it doesn't matter. I DM him saying, I love your job. It's so cute. And anyway, she's so cute. But anyway, but one of the things that he said, and he's done this podcast for years on Facebook ads, is that he is literally now is changing the podcast to a different name than it was before. And he's changed what the content is going to be. But, but he was, you know, you could see, obviously, he is a, a group that he works with, and I'm sure that they all said to him, this is the right thing for you to do. But the reason I'm giving this as an example is that there's people that are so successful, still have to evolve and still have to change and still need coaches or people around them to help support them when they know that they have to evolve. Always. Yeah, and I mean, it, and you you talked about it yourself about evolving. How you had the niche where you just focused entirely on uh, on coaches, and then you you know what? Can you talk to me a little bit more about what you when you realized that the niche was great, but you knew that there was a major uh, problem out there, and the reason that you changed to being a mindset coach is because of what you saw were the needs of the business. I don't want to give it away, but can you talk about it? A bit? <laughs> Sorry, I hope I didn't yeah. too much of your thunder on that one. No, no. Um, you know, and I think that this is a good story because in terms of, you know, for anyone listening, there's always a time to pivot. You will never stay where you are. I mean, if you do, your business probably won't be around for very long. Mm -hmm. So you're always going to be making small pivots, whether that's in what you offer or how you offer it or whom you offer it to or what have you. But what happened for me was interesting and that was a couple years ago and anyone listening who's been in the coaching industry for a long time will know exactly what i'm talking about um but i started coaching coaches before it was like the cool in thing to do and and before everyone and their dog became a business coach for coaches basically <laughs> and, and i remember this period of time where there was like a year and a half to two years um, what is this 2019 so this was probably around 20 2016 2017 is really when all of a sudden like everyone had a coach a coach a business was a business coach for coaches and i was where are these people coming from and how are they getting this experience and and i started um 
and then this overnight sensationalism stuff started happening where you know they were pr promising six figure businesses in very short periods of time and you know what right, right and you know by this by this point in time i had had enough business experience to know like they're either lying or there was something i drastically missed in all my training <laughs> like i don't know so anybody's listening to that and you're self-doubting yourself don't doubt yourself <laughs> well, because it's you know like one of one of the problems with the internet the internet is wonderful for so many things but one of the problems is you know it's really easy to um like here's the thing I, i've said this in an article i wrote once on linkedin and i said something like um you know the the truth is the one thing your business needs is time and the problem for business coaches is that time doesn't sell yeah. right and so um you you and and the other thing is most people are starting their businesses and they're all starting them with such various degrees of knowledge experience of confidence of uh understanding of the industry of the tools of tech of mentorship of network of money like how much money do you have accessible to you there and there these are all factors that determine your success all of them and they're a mix and no one person can say to you yeah it's going to take you three months or six months or 12 months no because you don't know what you don't know and you also don't know how are you going to handle things as they come what's going to be more difficult for you what's going to be easier for you etc and when you look at some of these overnight success stories there's a couple of things that didn't add up and and one of them was taking into account like what was this person's story so for some of them there were some um people that i knew through people in my network and their their story was true like there's one in particular i'm thinking about and she made almost a million dollars in her first year in her business but and she positioned it and this is because this was a pr thing of like going from on welfare to like a millionaire overnight basically but what if you read into the story more what you realize is she had learned how to build um online communities she had she had already had a successful online community she had already had a different type of business so by the time she got to the niche that she actually really did in one year um make almost a million dollars in a new niche but she wasn't new to business and she wasn't new to online marketing and she had some clout and she was very smart and diligent and she and she also hired help when she could and like do you know what I mean like there's just so many factors that you don't talk about that doesn't sell but so really her, it took her I don't I don't really know how many years but let's say 5 to 10 years to become the person who could get a million dollars in a year and so what was happening for me in my business and why I started to shift was because I started first of all I got real tired of the coaching industry pretty fast I was like I cannot handle all these people saying all this stuff and I want it also that, that there's coaches that were out there that didn't have the skills that really are required to be a coach it's, that's a big part of it so everyone the, the listeners that, that right now one of the big concerns I, I I'm, I'm not going to speak for you but for me my biggest concern is with coaches is that they're not they don't have the skills to be able to help you so you know it, with uh, Jennifer you've got all those skills you've had the business background you know how I've been in business for a long time but there's a lot of people out there that put their shingle on yeah. and on the door but don't have the skills to really help you so you got to be really concerned about that or aware of that but so I'm sorry I cut you off on your story yeah well i mean there is that but the biggest thing that i saw was too many uh coaches and too many entrepreneurs were quitting too early and they were self-doubting themselves because they were believing this propaganda basically and instead of understanding actually this is not reality you're right on track and doing fine 
you have unrealistic expectations and you have been told something that's not true. And in, in reality, like, can you manifest a million dollars in your first year of business? Sure. Anyone can do anything they put their mind to. Will you? I don't know. Cause you know what? There's like 10 million factors that determine your ability to make something like that happen. And not to mention your belief about it, which most new entrepreneurs would never believe deeply that they can do that. So, you know, like I just, I just found, I really wanted to start being the light to go people, like people, 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 like, no, this is not, you're not in this for six months to a year. If you want a successful business, you need a minimum of a three to five year commitment you need a larger vision. You've got to be, if you get into business for money, you're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> just don't do it. And it's not that the money doesn't come. It's just that if it's your main driver, it won't be enough to get you through the difficult times, particularly in the first couple of years. Yeah. Um, let's just talk about, you mentioned something about belief, which is, I think is interesting, especially as a mindset coach. I'm sure you have to deal with a lot of different beliefs. And what are you seeing that's very common right now? A lot of people, um, a lot of people want to believe things. And I think they believe it in their mind. So for example, they believe that they can be successful. Like they understand that it can happen for them, but there's a difference between knowing something and being that thing. So I always say it's the journey from your head to your heart. It's the difference between going to school and learning something and then going out in the world and practicing it and becoming a professional who actually, you really know the work now. Um, and so beliefs are the same thing. And a lot of people doubt themselves. A lot of people, really you know they have imposter syndrome they really wonder are they worth it can they make it happen there's so many people out there already doing this why would people choose me um and a lot of people really find it difficult really find it difficult i was in this boat as well to look beyond their current circumstances and to feel differently than where they are so for example I'll always say to someone, you're here and you want to be here. The fastest way to close the gap is you've got to be the person who's over here now. <laughs> so what do they think? What do they feel? What do they believe? And as you become, as you begin to embody that successful person and take on that identity, you'll close the gap because your behaviors will do so. But what happens is most people want the stuff meet and for entrepreneurs that's the money the clients etc mm -hmm. before they believe they are this person but that's not how creation works and that's not how you get things done and that's not how visionary entrepreneurs change the world they if you and i love using tech as an example like most what most people are doing so apple you know they had this vision for creating a phone that was basically a computer in your hand and it was never done before. And they were like, we're gonna do it. And they, if, if they did what most entrepreneurs do, we would not have iPhones. I agree, totally, right? totally. Yeah, and so what, what you, you have to believe in the unseen and you have to believe in your capability. And this is why I think having coaches and communities and everything is, is paramount to your success because some days it is hard to, keep motivating yourself like you need people who believe in you and you need people who cheer you on and because there's too many people who will tell you it can't be done but that's not true and we wouldn't be progressing as a society um in many of the ways if you look at even what bill and melinda gates have been doing with their foundation i mean eradicating polio from the planet and trying to fix world sanitation problems like is, is extraordinary work that's very difficult but they see the end in mind and they're not giving up until it's done absolutely so in, I, I actually loved how you explained about the belief and when you had your hands like this and saying that you know one was on one side one was on the other for those people that aren't seeing the video seeing the video they're only hearing it but it's getting from one side to the next and then actually believing or living that person, correct me if I'm wrong here, 
you live that person now on where you want to be. Correct. So what an example would be if you, okay, if you want to create a million dollar business, let's say you want a million dollars a year in revenue in your business and you're just starting out or maybe you're at 50 grand a year or whatever. So what I always say to people is, all right, I want you to tell me about what is it like to run your business as a millionaire? Like you have this much income coming in, like how do you run your days? How do you show up? How do you speak to people? How do you speak about your business? Are you getting up at five and going to the gym? Like, what are you doing? Like, tell me what this looks like. How, how are you marketing yourself? Are you consistent? Are you doing this? Are you doing that? What does it look like? So then they'll take me the picture. This is this. I go, okay, start doing that. You do that and you will embody the beingness of the millionaire you want to be. You don't, you don't wait until you're there. That's how you get there. So it's almost like you have a vision board, but in the vision board, it's like, oh, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. But instead, you have the vision board and you're going to live that vision board. Yeah. So this is not about spending beyond your means or anything like that. This is about, you know, you know, like even I think I have the gift of, right? What's that? It's more mindfulness. It's mindfulness and go, you know. Like a lot of people, for example, I know this happens because I've just worked with enough entrepreneurs. So many entrepreneurs, they don't have a proper strategy and they are spending their days busy being busy. They're not doing the right thing. And I'm like, okay, if you had a million dollar a year business, would you be busy being busy or would you be doing the right stuff? So step one, go get a proper strategy from someone who understands your business and can help you do that. And then you start executing on it. Like don't wait around and go twiddle your thumbs and what should I do today? Like, like someone who's a successful entrepreneur, they have no shame in saying, I don't know how to do this. I need help. I, I'm a big believer for as well as when you're saying that a strategy, if a part of the strategy is a financial one. So I mean, that's what happens is if you're growing your business or if you need um, an angel investor, you have to have that financial um, plan in place. But even if you're not going to get investors, you should have a really good financial plan. Now we say, you know, work at the very, at the very bottom is the outcome. And then start working up on all the, what you need to do in order to get that outcome. Yeah, absolutely. So what do you feel right now is maybe is the biggest problem with entrepreneurs? Is there like there's some kind of epidemic that you see that's, that is here today and maybe wasn't here five years ago? I, you know what, actually, I, I really feel um, there's kind of two main epidemics and the internet has caused both. <laughs> yeah. um, so the first epidemic, which has been, <laughs> what's that? Is it it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, listen, I tell you, if I ever met Mark Zuckerberg, would I ever give him some hug? Because I, I'm so, you have to learn how to use the internet and social media as a tool, not let it destroy your life. Yeah, right? I agree. Yeah. So, and it's like anything. It's like, it's like even like food, like food can destroy your life or it can nourish you and ha help you have the most extraordinary life ever. So it's, it's all in how you look at it. But nonetheless, there's two main things that I think have been going on for entrepreneurs that are not helping them. The first one is isolation. So because of the internet, there's a lot of people working from home, which what on one hand is awesome, but on the other hand, people are feeling more lonely than ever before. They're feeling disconnected and we are social animals. And I don't care if you say, I'm an introvert. I don't need to be around people. Yes, you do. And you need support. <laughs> and you need community. Now you might not need that 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but you need it. And if you're always by yourself and you're learning things on your own constantly, like you'll go out of your mind. And this happened to me. And, and you also don't have the benefit of being around people who can look at things differently and help you move ahead faster. So isolation leads it's it's documented it's documented in entrepreneurs now like it leads to depression and anxiety faster so that's one thing um and the other thing that the internet has done that has created a problem well it's not the internet it's the users of the internet is this um they're they're somehow and actually this is not just the internet this is also news and media and stuff but um there is this illusion of the world of entrepreneurship and 
you know, that it's, it's jet planes and days off and sitting at the beach with your laptop and like, oh, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. this, it's this entrepreneurial lifestyle that people think, Oh, you're an entrepreneur. How nice. You get to make your own schedule, do this or that. And yes, you do get to make your own schedule. And yes, you are a hundred percent in control of all that. But the reality is that, um, make eat, getting yourself in a position where if you want to spend all day on the beach like that's not how you get there <laughs> right and, and so I feel like people have this illusion and this really wrong idea of what it means to be an entrepreneur and what that's going to look like and so they get disheartened and they get um like they feel like something's wrong with them when they're not successful quickly whatever quickly means to them and so then they think they can't make it work and interestingly so i was in this group call the other day and a girl who's building a membership she said um you know i so i've been you know doing the things like she took this facebook course she's like you know it's working i'm doing engagement but like i don't know i still have like a lot of people and i was asking her some of her numbers and i said how long have you been doing this she's like two months i was like two months i said do you know what the equivalent of what you just said is <laughs> i said i said it's like you were just born and you want to be 18. <laughs> I, like, I said you know what you need patience that's what you need. <laughs> and she, she laughed i mean uh, you know i well i did kind of say it like that but i was like lady like your expectations is, is these grandiose expectations that it's uh, unrealistic I, really right and i say i'm like I don't, I don't even understand why you would think you would have this result you just said you want it in two months like whoever that's ridiculous like unless you had a million dollars to spend on ads <laughs> to get the traffic <laughs> And even then, if you didn't do it right, it could be a million dollars just uh, down the tube. It, it, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I'm really glad that you said that about the two things about being an epidemic, because I certainly uh, totally agree. And I think the isolation is a real big thing. And for people that are just starting out as an entrepreneur, they really have to understand that, particularly if you're coming out of an office environment, um, or, you know, if you, depending on what level you are, but I can tell you with me, I was in senior levels and I had people doing everything for me. So all of a sudden, when you come into something and you're doing it yourself, it's kind of really hard and you have no one to talk to about this newest, greatest idea you have. So I mean, that's another reason why I you know keep going down. It's like I'm selling the coach, but I really am selling people, our listeners on, on having mindset coaches because it's so important because you are going to feel isolated. I don't care who you are, you're going to feel isolated at some point. And I do think that because of what we see on uh, marketing and digital marketing and the people that are out there right now giving you really false impressions. And I mean, it, I don't care what business you're in, it's going to take hard work and there's no one. I have not met an entrepreneur, even extremely, extremely successful ones, that are laying on the beach doing their job. I'm sorry, it just doesn't happen. There's maybe a handful in the world, and yes, you, maybe it could be one part of the handful, but the likelihood is, and I'm not trying to discourage anyone either, but I like the idea of making sure that you have just a little bit of a reality check as well. Well, it's interesting because Tim Ferriss made that popular when he wrote The Four Hour Work Week, which was about a decade ago, I believe. And the irony of the four hour work week that he wrote about, um, which he did obtain, but it was he, the, the, the company that he built to do that was selling products. And what he ended up doing was automating all of it. So he figured out how to optimize getting traffic to his website and how to sell and everything was, um, drop shipped. Like he had nothing to do with it other than communicating to all the people who were running his business that's what he's he outsourced that's right but what's interesting is as soon as he became an author and then went into the realm of being a public figure like his schedule blew up like there was no four hour work week for Tim <laughs> Ferriss and there still isn't I mean his podcasts are like two hours an episode for God's sake <laughs> and so you know like people it's and, and the other thing I always say to people too with entrepreneurs is the reality is 
most people don't want to work four hours a week. Like most people want to dig their hands into something and they, they want to create something they're proud of and they want to be a part of something that's bigger than themselves. Like I don't want to work four hours a week. I, I enjoy what I'm doing. I want to build, I've got many years ahead of me. I've got lots of things I want to accomplish. Like I can't do that one day a week, I can't even imagine, nor do I want to, like what, you can only relax for so long. And most entrepreneurs get into a business because they really love it, they're yeah. passionate about it. In fact, if they don't, if they're not, then they shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. I mean, you're doing something like this that you really do love. A lot of those, it just doesn't even go like work because you're enjoying it so much, so. Yeah, now I do believe though in like I, I am not about hustling yourself into burnout. I think that yes. my, my philosophy is you've got to joyously build your business, which is why my membership site is called The Joyous Journey. And you know, to me, if that means it takes you a bit longer, but at least you have fun along the way, your health is intact, your relationships are intact, and you get to where you wanna go anyways. And besides most of the point, like what's the point of being you know, reaching your goal when your health is gone and you've gained lots of weight and you're exhausted. Like that's not, that's no way to live. No. And then you really, you haven't achieved what you wanted to achieve. If you left a corporate environment, really you've just traded uh, bad habits into another area of, of bad habits, right? Yeah. Well, Jennifer, it's me. I'm so glad you came to talk to us about it, about mindset and the way you work and how you think and as entrepreneurs and what they have to go through. But um, one of the things I like doing at the very end is a couple of things is number one is I like an opportunity for the guests to have a really good, strong message that they want to tell entrepreneurs. And number two, after that is I'd really like to go over how people can reach you and maybe can explain a little bit more about that. So how about if you tell us the message to everybody that you would like the world to know? You know, I, truly believe if there's a dream in your heart you are fully capable of making it happen you just need some patience you need the right mentorship and education and you need persistence perfect well said i have check mark agree <laughs> i love hearing all our guest messages because they're always so heartfelt so, so Jennifer, tell me about, or tell our listeners about how they can get hold of you and a little bit about your joyous journey, your membership, and how they become, can become a member. Yeah, so my main website is jennifer-trask.com. Um, Trask is T-R-A-S-K for those that are just listeners. So yep, yeah, yeah. But if you want to learn more about the joyous journey, you can go to joyousjourney.biz, and the doors are opening this October. Uh, so that's exciting. And we've got lots of great uh, training coming up as part of the launch. So even if they just take part in their training, they're going to learn a lot about how to build a joyful, profitable business, how to work more in flow, how to like not have to hustle and burn themselves out. Um, this is a big part of what I do with people because I want, again, I want people to really enjoy the experience of being an entrepreneur. Um, and and but still do that in a way that allows them to be profitable and to give back and to do the things that matter to them so that's the joyous journey dot biz B -I -Z. Not, uh it's just joyous journey dot biz not the joyous journey just joyous journey dot just joyous so no that no <laughs> <laughs> i try to keep it as short yeah, it's much better if you do. So joyousjourney dot biz. Is, yeah. And that's gonna open up when did you say so the doors will officially open on the 29th, I think. <laughs> Don't hold me to that. Around the, around the end of October, the 28th, the 29th. Um, but we have a lot of fun things happening before that that will start the week of the 14th of October. So there's lots of good things that's, um, coming up. So, but if they just go to joyousjourney.biz and sign up there, then they'll get all the information in their email. Okay. And the other thing is too, on your website, there's all kinds of great courses that are readily available, digital courses. Yeah. And I saw you had some little freebies in there. So yeah. you get the freebies. It's always good to do that. Get on your email list as well for Jennifer. 
and then you'll be able to be uh, aware of what when things are going to be uh, available all the time. So my recommendation is go in and get your get your email and put your email on whatever. What is your freebie anyway, Jennifer, uh, on the website right now? Well, there's about four of them, but one of them, uh, the main one on the on the on the website is um, I th I think that one is about getting moving into flow out of hustle it's i think it's flow is the new hustle okay well anyway so just go on to jennifer's website so you can take a look at that and uh, do join on her email list so you'll get a lot more information you've got some great blog stuff that's on there too for entrepreneurs so go and take a look at that if you're an entrepreneur it'll give you some uh, some ideas and some insight that'll certainly help your business so thanks again, Jennifer, for coming on. I really appreciate you sharing your message with all of us. It was delightful. Thank you for having me. Okay, take care and welcome and good luck on your launch, everybody. Thanks. Okay, take care. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Ladies in Biz. Send us your comments on ladiesinbiz.com. We would like to hear from you.